Hey everyone, I'm here with my dear friend Karen McBride. We're here at her shop, um, which uh, is in, as impressive inside as it is outside. And so Karen, um, you brought this shop from somewhere, didn't you? Yeah, it came from the Alexandria area. Okay. Um, and I took it down and numbered the logs. So if you see here, Vic, this is number 91, 92, 87. Excellent. Those are sheep ear tags. Oh, and, okay. uh, yeah, it's a quick way of making tags. And uh, so once you number the logs, uh, I numbered the logs in place, made myself a little plan, uh, took it down, brought it here on a log truck, and, uh, and then simply put it back up following the, following the number scheme. So the, without that, you're in big trouble. Yes, that's right. Yeah, right, you would, because oh, you yeah, wouldn't yeah. have any idea of how it, yeah, yeah that's yeah, incredible. Yeah. And so it's been rechanked and it's obviously, it's, uh, it's, is it fairly, uh, like as far as um, heat and, co and oh, coal, this is, is it? This is like the old world charm mm -hmm. with uh, new world technology. That's awesome. So there's insulation that's blown in here, actually oh, between okay. the, the chinked on the outside first, did all the electrical work, uh, blew in the insulation and then chinked on the inside. Okay. So this is warmer than the house. Wow. Those are uh, triple pane uh, windows that are on there. Right, right. And it's heated with a radiant heated floor. So okay. it is more comfortable in here. Uh, it, believe me, more comfortable in here than it is in our old Well, that house. must be horrible. You have to come out here Yeah, all I the know. Time, I right? spent all my time outside staying warm. Why don't we go inside and take yeah. a look? Okay, so I've been to this studio many times before. And I think uh, the, the, when I walk in the door, the thing I'm always most impressed with is this bandsaw. Well, this is my baby. Um, I found, I was looking for a vintage saw and uh, my, freddy, my buddy uh, Jack Forsberg told me that uh, if I was lucky, I would find a Robinson. Right. And um, he thinks it's uh, one of the finest saws ever made. What I would think is really interesting about the Robinson is uh, this is the smallest saw that they made. Oh my inches. goodness. So the big So one, sorry, what, 24? This is 24. Okay. Yeah. There we go. That is awesome sound. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's not as loud as you would think, right? Like, it seems like these motors. And as we walk by the Robinson, I noticed that there's another big gray machine here. Now I've heard of Wadkin, uh, you know, Wadkin was an English yep. uh, maker, but now this one's Wadkin Burr's Green. Right. So what's the story here? Oh, um, you really need to ask Jack Forsberg about the, that history, and I don't know the dates, but um, Burr's Green bought Wadkin. Okay. Yeah. And this is a shaper, obviously. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, this is called the BRS. Okay. Um, and according to uh, the Wadkin... Uh, uh, gurus, this is the most sought after small shaper that they made. They made other shapers after this, but the BRS was the nicest of them. Okay. The uh, this two, uh, all my machinery is three phase, and uh, this as well is three phase. And you can, the, I hid the phase converter inside this. Right. This is the um, the s controls that um, you can mount on the outside. So I can use the old switch gear. This isn't plugged in right now, okay. but I can use the old switch gear here to turn yeah. it on and if I want, or I can use this and this, um, uh, what are they called? Pen potentia potentiometer yeah. yep. or whatever. Mm -hmm. This, um, I can use this to vary the frequency and uh, vary the speed on mine. Oh, that's which handy. Which is really nice. Especially the, different size bits and Exactly, cutters. and the uh, beauty. Okay, so let's keep, let's keep moving along. So we have a drill press, which is pretty, Pretty pedestrian. I yeah, mean, yeah, uh, this is a little. Yeah, um, you know, I like. Um, we were talking earlier about how you have put uh, a dirty table onto yeah. a clean one, so you can do metal work and yeah. woodwork at the same time, or with the same machine. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of cool. But what's really cool over on this end here is this machine. So I had never heard of one of these before. And this isn't even a woodworking machine, is it? This is... No, this is called the printer saw. Okay. And it was used in the printing industry to make printing blocks. And so they were cutting them out of um, lead. Uh, I guess they would have cut some wood on it. Um, when I cleaned this thing up, I found a lot of um, copper also had been cut on this. Okay. Um, but they're, they're incredibly accurate uh, machines. And um, of course, the lead blocks that they were cutting were had to be perfectly square. 
Right. So, um, you know, uh, my buddy Conrad Sauer, you know yep. Conrad, yep. Um, he and I always joked and say, you know, the worst thing that somebody could ask you to do is, um, in woodworking, is cut something at 90 degrees. <laughs> right. yeah, you know, exactly. like the most difficult thing to do. People think right. it's fairly easy, routine cut to make, but a true 90 is really hard, and that's what this machine is all about. Um, okay. um, so now I'm going to bring this all the way up, and as I do that, I need to lift this corner. Wow, that's terrifying. There. Yeah, that's the height of the cut that you can get out of that. And you know, there's no, um, this is this uh, blade is held on with three screws. Right. And so there's no nut on this arbor on this side. Oh, okay, okay. And this is. So that allows you to go like flush, flush. With, with the, the blade. Side of the blade, with right. The blade that high, yeah. Right, right. Um, so this is your, this is a sliding table. Whoops, I'm going to cut past there, but there's a, there's a sliding table. So it's just, it's a, I never thought I'd have a sliding table saw, especially in this shop, but now I do. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, that's awesome. And then this isn't the only table saw. This is, this is your other, this is a this general. This is the biggie, yeah. But this is not, this is not your typical 10 inch uh, saw, oh, yeah. this is a little bigger. Yeah, this is a 14 inch. Uh, there's only a 12 inch blade on it right now. Okay. Um, this is, uh, you know, in, until that, recently, this was my mainstay, the single runner sled. I am a big single runner sled guy. I love I don't them. Know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I you, love them. You too? Yeah, I um, think the double sleds are not worth the trouble. No, no, I've never had one. And uh, and I never will. I'm not sure how much I'll use that now that I have that. Right, right. Um, but um, yeah, this is a great big workhorse. Um, it doesn't look like it, but I can rip a sheet of plywood. Um, <laughs> though everything in this uh, room is all at the same height. Right. Um, so that I can run out to there. I can drop a piece of plywood down on here. Okay. Um, I can get go over top of my jointer there. That's smart. So. Um, even though it's a small shop, I can I can put a four by eight and do put a four by eight sheet of plywood down on this. Nice. Um, there's. Can I show you the little clamps that I use? Yeah, for? yeah. Uh, I make these um, clamps. They're so versatile. So usually, what I do is try to. You know, get one, one point, end here, right, right. and then you know, there's there's no moving that. So now I can cut. So yeah, well, yeah. Okay, so I just I'm just seeing now. This is the drill press that you're going to mount on yeah, that stand. Yeah, this we is saw the earlier. beautiful little drill press. Yeah, that thing is pretty cool. Yeah, this is a beauty. This came out of uh, NRC. Um, it's a it's a beauty of a drill press with a counterweight in it. So this whole thing slides up and down. Whoa. <laughs> Quickly. Uh, quickly. Well, it does have a counterweight on it okay. here, so it's it's actually well, actually, which it makes it very easy to lift, um, considering how heavy this piece is. Okay. Should have hung on to that. Um, anyway, that's the uh, that's the way that goes up and so down. So you can adjust that up and down, and then still have and the then still do well. this, still have this travel. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Well, that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's gonna be a neat piece upstairs, kind of a bit of a showpiece. Well, that's actually, uh, that's brilliant that you're talking about upstairs because we should probably head We're upstairs. Next. Let's do Let's that. Go. So what always impresses me about your shop is like these little details. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that I really love is your staircase that mm. goes up the stairs. And so the fact that you carved the saying. Yeah, a, it's a saying, yeah. yeah. Perfection is achieved, not when there's nothing more to add, but when there's nothing left to take away, right. which I thought was a perfect design kind of reminder. Oh, me, for so. sure. So now this is part two of the shop. Yeah. Um, so um, I get the feeling that you probably drink too much coffee. Yeah, that's right. Um, but what a great way. That's all your fasteners and it's stuff. perfect, yeah. I'm not a coffee drinker, actually. That's the funny <laughs> part of it. People always say that. You must love coffee. It's a, No, it's a great way to, to um, keep all your stuff sorted. Same with, you'll see by looking around, especially more up here than downstairs. I haven't really built any storage for um, for my shop, and I like to buy uh, whatever I can and vintage some of the pieces, vintage stuff. Yeah. I have to say for these guys too, this is a fabulous way to store things. But um, 
And I love these horizontal oh, filing right, cabinets. Oh, like the barrister style. Oh my God. They, you won't believe, first of all, how much you can get in there. And then um, once you open it up, you can see everything that's in there. Oh, okay. So, that's a smart idea. Um, just like kitchens nowadays where they're working with big drawers. Oh, with, with big extensions. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. essentially what this is. Oh, that's cool. And, so this um, is your finishing. This is all my finishing stuff. Oh, and cool. I, <clears throat> if I'm at all uh, confused, I write on the top of it what it is so that when I'm looking down, I can see. Right. Um, but mostly by placement, I know what's there. Again, more vintage equipment here. Yeah. Like this thing, like this is like a, <laughs> it's almost like a shopsmith kind of thing. Isn't it, it is, it is. It's uh, quite an odd little machine. It's uh, made by Myford, and anybody that knows Myford uh, probably knows them for their metalworking machine. They made uh, incredible uh, lays, um, metal lays. Mm. That's really what they're known for. But this is a universal machine um, that they made a, um, they did make a long bed lathe. This is the head of the long bed lathe. Right. And with this round tube that went on forever. Okay. Um, but then they actually made this short version of it and turned it into a multifunctional machine. Right. So you have a little wee table saw. Um, and then this is also a jointer too, right? Yes, and down there you can see I've started to take that apart cool. um, to get ready to paint it, clean it up and paint it. And uh, the jointer goes on this end here. Okay. So it, it'll fit on this end. Um, it, traditionally what happened is the jointer replaced the bandsaw. Oh, okay. But I'm going to set it up so I can run the, put the jointer on here and run the jointer, the table saw, and the bandsaw all at the same time. That's awesome. So, um, and these over here are going to be the legs for that. Oh, little black beautiful. Legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some cast yeah. legs. It's right now, it's on a, a much too wobbly a stand. Oh, okay. I see. Um, yeah. But I do use it. The, really, the only functioning piece right now is the bandsaw. Right. Um, and I bought it for the bandsaw. Right, for tighter the, curves. And yeah, for tighter curves. I always like a small bandsaw for up here so I don't have to go running downstairs. Every so time. there's the <laughs> oh, that's cute. beautiful machine. Really, again, amazing solid casting. Right. Um, and just a beautiful looking bandsaw. Nice. <laughs> Back for that baby. So and then of course now you've got a, your cabinet maker's bench. Yeah, my cabinet maker's bench. You can see uh, I do not very pristine. I do uh, everything on here, including yeah. a odd little bit of finishing. I did clean up for you guys, um, but uh, yeah, this is kind of a, a friend of mine made me this years ago. It's a little smaller, um, especially considering I have so much room, but it was originally made when I was living in an apartment, right. and it's a nice size for me, and I, I've never uh, switched out of this bench. This is how big my bench is. is it's it? like, yeah, it's like 20 inches by 5 feet, yeah. and I find anything more than that, you're just stacking a bunch of yes. crap on yeah. it, and yeah. then it's... Now, I don't have one of those, and I work oh, for Veritas, really? oh. and I'm a little jealous that ah. I'm looking at it right now. But the Tucker Vice, we must get asked a hundred times a year, yes. like, can you, can you make it again? Yes. Can you make it again? Yes. Um, so that's a pattern maker's vice. It is. It's and a wonderful vice. that allows you to move things around and tweak it. and I can flip it up and around. So this rotates, and I reach down here. This guy. Yeah, that's flip it up awesome. and rotate it. You can do whatever you want. With do whatever it. you want with it, and you can even loosen these bolts and um, uh, set these jaws askew, so I could have them taper. Right. Right. Could do that. So pattern makers used to have to work with draft angles and all that other stuff, yes. right? So being able to change that slightly was, was pretty important. And if you can move the workpiece and keep your, whatever your hand tool stroke is, nice and straight, right? And then also the, the second set of jaws. Yeah, so there's the second set of jaws. That's cool. And uh, I want to work with something small. And then the dogs, of course, that then this, this is, um, there were other pattern making vices. I don't know that they had the four dogs. I really don't use them that much, but right. there you go. So there's four of them that can come up and you could work on the dogs as well.
That's cool. So really, there's nothing I can't use it. And you can, of course, you can stop this way and work in this direction on the vice. Sure you can, yeah, which Whatever is fantastic. Whatever you want, really. Very cool. You know, like obviously a lot of the machining work happens downstairs, yeah. and then once you get closer to a project being done, um, you come up here. Yeah. Um, all the, lot, hand work, all the handwork. All the handwork, yeah. right, hand tools. Um, so a lot of people would probably ask, you know, do you find that working on two floors is difficult? Mm. You know, how do you, how do you feel about that? Um, I don't know, but this is my first big shop. If I was doing it again, I think I wouldn't. Do two I, floors? I wouldn't do two floors. Okay. Um, I fell in love with the building and... Yeah. Uh, you know, that's just the way it is. The so, charm of it seems like it, it would be worth it. It was. It is. Yeah. And uh, and I love it. But the yeah, charm, the different. charm of this place, yeah. you know, to me is is what's really cool. And having these kind of two separate spaces, it it almost seems like you would be in a different frame of mind on different floors. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, You're kind yeah. of in the production. in the roughing and production yeah. side down yeah. here, and up yeah. here, you yeah. know, I feel like you'd be a little bit more. Yeah towards the end of a project yes. and yeah. you know working by hand yeah. doing finishing work all yeah. that other kind yeah. of stuff doing your quiet hand planing up here and right and you kind of separate yeah. you know so i've heard some people refer to it as a dirty shop and a clean yes, shop. yes exactly right yeah. where you can have yeah. the two separate. yeah things. never do any metal working up here at all right. you're right, right all that dirty stuff uh, sure. and the other thing that i learned is that i have two of everything so Hi. there's no you know there's a reason well you see Michael Fortune used to lose pencils and, and I lose my tape measures. So, so there's yeah, a million tape measures yeah. around. But you learn to have a set of wrenches for upstairs. You know, I've got a whole uh, box here. So I got upstairs wrenches upstairs and, tool and downstairs, and downstairs wrenches. Tool. The spray booth is a, this is a sail cloth or a parachute cloth. And this is a parachute cloth wall. There's two of them. And this unfurls to um, come to exactly this point right over here. And the other one is, you can see a little um, detent in the floor there. The other one comes right to here. You can see the spray pattern on the floor. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, I open the window and I drop this fan down and, um, and that's my exhaust is at that window. So. Um, in a very, very small space, I, I can make myself a spray. Well, Karen, listen, it's been awesome. Uh, hanging out with you in your yeah, shop. No um, the um, you know you do. Everybody knows you do incredible work, um, and there's such a diversity of the work that you do. Like I can see you doing some reproduction stuff here and fixing stuff up, as well yeah. as you know doing outdoor projects, indoor projects. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really cool to see the space that you all of that, all of that Where stuff it all happens. All happens. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, you're welcome, Vic. Anytime. Cool. <laughs>